cooking meals on the boat. We still have to install the stove box, for example. After some contemplation, we decide to keep things really uncomplicated by simply creating a gimbal with some screws and or bolts. To begin the process of dry fitting everything together, we find the halfway point of the box, as high up as possible, and mark and drill some exploratory holes. We check the level, and it looks like the gimbal is balanced nicely. Although the whole boat is listing to one side because we only have a water tank on one side right now. We will need to replace the screws with larger shank bolts, now that it has been more or less balanced. The threadless part of these kinds of bolts will give a smooth, proper gimbal that will chew less into the wood. I still need to put some more paint on the stove box, and we'll need to insert some plastic bushings around the bolts eventually. In the meantime, I have some no-cook shelf-stable recipes and snacks to bring aboard while we're slowly putting the galley back together. My favorite snack, I never get tired of it, are faux Lara bars. For off-the-grid living or trying to conserve electricity and to get a little exercise maybe even, there are several different designs of manual food processors. The crank kind, push down, and rope pull. When I saw that the rope would be the possible breaking point, I knew that I had found the right device for me. We used it for about one week and the rope broke. And then we hauled out some Dyneema string from our storage, opened up the cap, and replaced it. No problem. I broke the original rope trying to chop dried apples specifically, which is really spongy and leathery, but it's worth the trouble of chopping it up because it's delicious. Then I tackled the dates. My original question before I first chopped up the dates was, will it blend? Will it blend with nuts and pure powdered Oaxacan cacao and a pinch of salt too? Yes, indeed. I knead the mix a bit to even it all out, and you can see that everything sticks pretty well together. Although it doesn't look the most appetizing. I fix that though by putting together a little wooden press to give the bars a more endearing shape. Next step in the galley, install a faucet. I had plans for where I wanted to install it and what exactly I wanted to install. The criteria we were looking for was to have a smaller hole and to not have a opening and closing valve. But I searched and I searched. This is literally the only faucet I could get in Mexico online or in stores that we could find that has one or less valves. As usual, you have to be flexible about these things, especially when having to get in under the galley counter. In the extremely uncomfortable space, I planned out another exploratory drilling operation. The hole didn't come out exactly where I thought it would, but I think this will work out alright. So I start to get the hole saw together. I will start out with a smaller hole. I would rather that it fits snugly and have to widen the hole 19 mil, rather than starting out with too wide of a hole. 
The bottom piece of the sink is almost the same circumference as the top, so this gives me an idea of how it will sit and where I can drill the hole without drilling through the metal rim of the sink. I would have liked it a little further this way, but I can't do it because the metal rim of the sink goes until there. The metal rim stops about here, and so be it. It needs to be bigger. So let's just widen that hole by a millimeter or two, no problem. Ha! With a little bit of leftover sealant from the sink and window jobs, and a pinch more of boat yoga contortions under the sink, I screw on that sucker and we're in business again. We escape the galley and take some more small sailing craft lessons with our friend Tommy. Today the lesson will be windsurfing. However, windsurfing is quite difficult, so he's just going to take off here and practice a little bit on his own. Robbie's got the sunfish, so I'm left alone with Choco on the panga to watch. The windsurf is a really amazing little watercraft, but typically it's hard to sail more than 90 degrees into the wind, and man, that sail is heavy. Robbie finally returns from his jaunt in the sunfish, and I hop aboard for some practice. Last time on the sunfish was my first time on the sunfish, and this time we're refining and honing the skills a little bit meaning everything, learning everything. <laughs> so there's enough wind for the tack, we don't have enough speed for the tack. The boat's like this, you push the rudder opposite from you, you lift the board up a little bit. The board goes sideways, starts lifting sideways to the wind. So, first thing you do is you pull the rudder a bit this way, and then you put, that already is making us go forward a little bit, very slowly. Then you can put the thing back in, and then you pull a little bit, now we're, we're going. Commit to it. Tack. Right? Sail went there. So this, as soon as you tack, you put this straight. Almost against. You, you keep it that way. The wind, the direction of the wind. So the boat doesn't go into the wind anymore. It goes, it stays down the wind. If, if you let this go too much there, it will go into the wind and you lose your tack. It's a very simple boat to sail. It's a great beginners for, for a lot of people. You learn them the fundamentals, I think so. What is this like a safer of the dinghy sailing boats or what? Yeah, it's safer. It's not a safer. Ah! <laughs> 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 yes, very safe. Very safe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, more or less. Yeah, there is more sail there. I was looking at it now and there is more sail there, yeah. We go much faster with the two of us on board, either because Robbie trims the sail better than I do on my own, or because the extra weight gives us some more momentum. Could be either way. After going out a bit again on my own, Again, it's apparent that I could use some of his extra weight with me on board. Choco is just itching to get out there with us on the sailboat. Abandoned ship. And he's getting ready for the sailing life with the 100% ocean diet as well.
So inside the canal entrance, we test out the windsurf a tiny bit after all. The task of just standing on the board and lifting the sail seems monumental and almost impossible. It feels like it weighs about 200 pounds. No exaggeration. Your left hand is the first. Perfect. Okay. The most important in the beginning is uh, to have the, the mast like, como es eso? Nice and straight, yeah. yes. And then once you get it up standing, it wants to luff like a sailboat sail, pointing directly into the wind, and it throws you down. Very good. Look, like 10 meters. But if you can balance just right, it starts to sail you away. Uh-oh, now what? How do you turn this thing? And when I get back to the boat, it's time for a good snack. And conveniently, I have my date bars to chomp into. 